Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to discuss with you a topic that came up in some of the comments on another video, which is the subject of investing in REITs versus real estate. It is something that I have often heard, especially people kind of from the traditional financial industry, so investment advisors, etc., or people who are used to investing in stocks talk about. But I think it's worth diving into how it might apply to you and what sort of investment decisions you should make. So we're going to discuss the nuances, the differences, the pros and cons of REITs, which for those of you who aren't familiar is a real estate investment trust versus real estate directly. So let's dive in. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notifications bell. Thank you for your support. If you'd like help with international investing, relocating abroad, getting second citizenships, forming companies, opening bank accounts, et cetera, please reach out to me. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosman. There's a link in the description below or send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. All right. So just very briefly, uh, the concept here is that one is pretty apparent. You can go and buy a property that's investing in real estate, right? And there's lots of sophisticated ways, you know, maybe you're going to flip options on the properties. Maybe you're going to do, you know, buy, renovate, and redraw, maybe you're gonna, you know, there's lots of different things you can do, right? Obviously there's different classes of real estate. You know, are you in a situation where you're doing, I don't know, uh, like agricultural property? Uh, are you doing commercial, residential, multifamily, et cetera, okay? But the point is, in these cases, you're actually buying the asset. The other alternative is you can invest into a REIT. And I say the other alternative, there's a bunch of other alternatives, but uh, a REIT is typically some sort of, almost like a fund, uh, I guess you can define it as a fund, but it's a particular legal structure in which a pool of people are purchasing properties. And so the idea is that you own the properties, but you own it via this instrument, which is the trust, and you do it collectively with a variety of other people. And, you know, that's the deal. So what sometimes people will say is they'll say, hey, instead of buying real estate, why don't you just invest in a REIT? Because if you invest in a REIT, you don't have to worry about the maintenance. You don't want to have to worry about the hassles. You don't have to worry about insurance claims, tenants, etc. You don't have to be in a situation where uh, you're concentrated into a single asset. Usually the assets are quite diversified. Maybe you've got quite a large number of apartment buildings, maybe multiple geographies, etc. So, you know, this versus this. And those are all fair arguments. Okay, we'll talk, cover in a minute some of the pros and cons. But I think it's important to recognize that these are fundamentally different assets. The difference between investing in an asset itself and the instrument is a big difference. I'll give you an example. Uh, you could buy oil, and the most direct way you could do that is to just go and buy barrels of oil and store them, right? You could also buy oil futures, different thing, or you can buy something like USO, which is uh, an ETF that is supposed to try and track the price of oil. Now, in reality, if you look at the real price of oil and you look at the price of USO, you're going to find that it's quite different. Okay, it, it deviates pretty dramatically. And the reason is because instruments fundamentally behave differently than the underlying asset. And this can be a pro and a con, okay? So I don't consider uh, the risk profile and the overall function of real estate to be the same as a REIT. In other words, you should invest in them for different reasons. Investing in a REIT is really more like investing in a stock. What does this mean? Well, it means that the price can get bid up dramatically more than the underlying value. It can get oversold dramatically under the, uh, the fair market value. It can be uh, just subject to different, it has obviously much more liquidity, right? You don't have typically, although it might vary depending on the brokerage, you don't typically have the same way that leverage plays out in this particular case. And you're in a situation where uh, the cash flow is, I mean, well, you're definitely subject to a bunch of fees from somebody's management, right? So you've got all these different factors at play. There's times where having liquidity is great. There's times where, you know, being able to get into an asset like this, which is zero hassle, is great. On the other hand, there are a whole bunch of benefits that come from the tangible asset, which are quite different. So first of all, you don't have management risk when you're talking about buying a tangible asset. Right? Whereas over here, you do have, have management risk. You have to trust that those people are going to do a good job. Uh, over here, you have the ability to control things like renovations, expenses, etc. In other words, you can do a better job with this asset and do better with it. Okay? Over here, you cannot. Over here, you have the ability to go and buy the asset for less than it's worth. Okay? Over here, 
You can sort of, but it's much more complicated. Uh, or it's not much more complicated. It's more subject to market whims, uh, which it, like, you're, it's harder to, you have to kind of assess like what is the value of the underlying portfolio and am I buying for more than that? So what I would say is if you're in a situation where the market price of a REIT is dramatically lower than the fair market value of the properties held in the REIT, then it probably makes sense to buy it, right? That's right, makes sense. Uh, on the other hand, if you're going to go and if you're in a variety of different markets, it's very difficult to do that with a REIT to any degree with sufficient margin of safety. Whereas over here, you almost always have an ability to shop, et cetera, because the reality is that the amount of capital being deployed by the REIT is relatively large. You're talking about tens or hundreds of millions, maybe billions of dollars. And so they just can't find the same market inefficiencies that you can find over here. Similar is true when you're talking about renovations. If you're managing your own renovations, you can get some really good deals and you can force appreciation quite dramatically per dollar you put in. I would say that if you do a good job of it, you could probably force appreciation uh, for every dollar you put in, potentially three to five dollars, depending on how the property and how strategic you are and how you shop around and how much work you put in, et cetera. But potentially you could do that. And over here, this is not gonna happen because what they're gonna do is they're just gonna hire retail contractors. The retail contractors are gonna go and do the work. They're basically gonna pay market rate for it. So they're not gonna end up getting a big discount over uh, what the market is asking. So that gives you kind of less flexibility. Over here, you're almost certainly gonna be able to extract higher cash flow on a cash on cash basis. What does this mean? Well, I can go and I can buy a property that is say, let's say in the nine to 12% cap rate range, meaning that my, purchase, my ratio of rental income to purchase price is nine to 12%. You can maybe do better if you're talking about getting uh, short-term rentals, but let's just say nine to 12%. Now, that's great. However, on top of that, I can probably leverage it up. Depending on where I am, that could be anywhere from you know, 20 times leverage to you know, let's call it two times leverage, right? Over here, you know, you're probably not gonna do better than prevailing rates on a wholly owned asset. It's just probably not gonna happen. By the time you strip out the fees, et cetera, it's just not likely. Now, granted, you have some fees that come out of the cash that you're receiving on the cap rate, so it's not necessarily a totally apples to apples comparison. You could account for those and then you can do a cross comparison and see. Generally speaking, you can get better cash flow on this asset than on this one. On the other hand, your transaction cost, way, way higher over here, right? It's much more expensive to pay the realtor fees, to pay the legal fees, et cetera. Over on the side of the REIT, you can just go and buy through a brokerage account. Transaction costs are negligible and you're in a situation where you can get in and out. So if you're thinking more short term, then the REIT probably makes sense. If you're thinking long term, you want some long term asset to hold, this makes sense. Obviously you have the advantage over here that you're able to live in it. So if you're talking about buying a property for yourself, some people have this argument that you know real estate is not an asset. Uh, the argument is, hey, listen, uh, if you're paying money out, it's an expense. If it's giving money to you, it's an asset. This is the Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad definition. That being said, you're failing to account for the cost of rent. So if you're decreasing your rent, technically it's putting money in your pocket, which means technically it should be an asset from that standpoint. So it, it's bad accounting, I think, when they measure it that way. I think the more interesting thing is that you're your best tenant, right? You'll have zero vacancy and you won't have to pay property management fees for yourself. So this immediately boosts your margin on the rate of return that you're getting on a property. So all of this to being said, buy, both can be good assets, right? We're not saying that one is a good asset, one is a bad asset, only that uh, if you're in a situation where you're gonna choose, you should consider your circumstances. Are you looking at something long-term? Are you gonna be in a position where you can hire somebody to manage it or are you gonna be able to manage it yourself? What is that gonna mean for you in terms of your time commitment? You can almost certainly, if you're willing to do the digging, you can almost certainly get a better rate of return over here than you can over here. But it's more work and maybe people don't wanna do that. So anyway, I hope that helps. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? REITs versus standard real estate, pros and cons of each, your personal experiences, and I'm going to look forward to seeing you on the next video.